Well, good morning, friends. Uh, Brother Mike, back on the uh, Sunday morning podcast. It's nine o'clock Pacific time, nine o'clock Arizona time. And uh, noon on the East Coast. Okay. Um, thank you for tuning in today. Much blessings to you. Got a good, got another good one for you today. Very good Bible study. It'd be very encouraging. Uh, I'm still a little exhausted. Uh, I've been moving. Uh, my wife sold our house a couple months ago and then bought another house uh, right across the lake from where we were. We can almost see our new house. Weird, strange. Uh, but anyway, we had to move and I've been moving for what this is my eighth day now. I've been mo packing, moving, unpacking, <laughs> stocking. Man, I tell you, when you're my age, uh, making uh, 30 pickup load trips full of stuff. Uh, not a happy week. So I haven't been at the deliverance center this week. I've been off, not on vacation, but being tortured. So I'm back, ready to go, I hope. But I got a beautiful Bible study for you today. I hope, hope you're listening intently because um, I'm going to completely change your Christian life today. Please remember at the Arizona Deliverance Center, we're downtown on 15th Avenue, just south of Osborne Road. It's a red brick building. We have two live services every week, Thursday, Friday nights at 7 o'clock. We have podcasts, three a week. We have Mondays for the ladies at 6.30. We have a Wednesday for everybody at 6 o'clock. Then on Saturdays at 6 o'clock, we also have another podcast for everybody. And you wouldn't leave the anointing on these podcasts. People are getting delivered left and right, right on the, right on the pod, on the uh, Zoom. You'll see it. Everybody getting delivered. It's amazing. The anointing just spread everywhere. And it is fantastic. All right. We just finished up one of our children's deliverance services. Wow, was it unbelievable. In one case, a parent brought a child who had witchcraft demons. There was... There was witchcraft, sorcery, occult, and so on in the family tree. And this poor child, I think she, I think she was two, maybe, or, or one, something like that. Could have been less. Could have been a baby. I forgot right now. I apologize. You should have, uh, the demons were flying out of that poor kid. It's amazing. Um, if you have children, you cannot miss one of these children's deliverance services. That's parental neglect for a Christian to miss a children's deliverance service at the Arizona Deliverance Center. That is a big mistake that you will severely pay for as the child grows older, acquiring the traits of demons. There's nothing in the world sicker or sadder than having a child with the personality of demons. Absolutely horrible. And uh, we also have other services, women's seminars, things like that, please check the website, hardcorechristianity.com. Confidence is the key to miracles from God. Did you know that? Of course you did. You already knew that. Let's check it out. Please turn to 1 John chapter 5. This is one of the most anointed, spectacular books in the entire Bible. It's an absolute must read. The first four most important books are what? Of course. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Okay, and then the fifth book, Acts, ties the four together. It's truly spectacular. But right up there near the top of the books in the Bible, Old or New Testament, is the great apostle John in his first epistle. The thing is spectacular beyond belief. Just viciously anointed. The thing is, uh, the anointing in this book, wow, it's hard to top. Very hard to top. Check this out. 1 John chapter uh, 3, go to chapter 3, and then run down to chapter 20, excuse me, verse 20. Yeah, I'm still exhausted from the move, so if I start babbling and uh, I'm fumbling, uh, that's okay. You know, I'm just, uh, I'm wiped out. Verse 20, chapter 3, 1 John, unbelievable. It says, if our hearts condemn us not, 
God is great, greater than our hearts. If our hearts condemn us, God is greater than our hearts. The Greek word for, for condemn there is katagonosko. And it means to intellectually find fault with yourself. Fault finding. I've taught on the reject, demon of rejection numerous times over the years. And this demon is katagonosko, an expert at nitpicking you nitpicking you and john says if our hearts do not nitpick us god is greater than our hearts if our heart is nitpicking us god is greater greek word mizum bigger than our hearts cardia or we get our english word cardiac your heart is what you truly believe in your heart you might think something in your mind but not truly believe it there's a disconnect between the mind and the heart. The heart is symbolic of your entire inner man, which is made up of four parts, soul, spirit, conscience, and mind. Then he says, verse 21, beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence toward God. Let me introduce you to the family of miracles. Number one is faith, Greek word pistis. Number two is believe, Greek verb pistuo. The third word in this family of total victory is parousia, confidence. Parousia means to have an outspoken attitude about what you truly believe in your heart. And you can have it for anything. You can have it for evil. Adolf Hitler, when he gave those speeches, half that insane stuff, he actually believed. He truly believed that the Aryan race was superior to other races. And of course, uh, an American, a uh, truly great American, blew that theory right through the roof. And what was his name during the Olympics? The legendary Jesse Owens. <laughs> The Aryan race thing crashed and burned when that guy showed up at the Olympics. What an athlete he was, some kind of a freak. It says, beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence, parousia, toward God. That means your outspoken attitude, how you think, how you talk, how you express yourself. We have confidence toward God, okay? The greatest boxer that ever lived was the legendary Muhammad Ali. He had enormous parousia about himself. He had a almost like a brainwashed concept that he could beat any fighter that ever lived. He had confidence in himself. Our confidence isn't like Ali's. Ali's was in himself. We do not have confidence in ourselves. We abhor the flesh, to use the term Paul would say. And we have confidence in the author and finisher of our faith, the Lord Jesus, the Son of God. We have confidence toward God, toward the Lord Jesus. And whatever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments. The Greek word we keep, tereo. Tereo means to guard something like you would guard uh, a building, like a security guard or a soldier in a, guarding a warehouse. You, you are intently focused on keeping that thing, to rail his commandments. And we do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Aristos means to do things that God likes. We are just like God and God's just like us. He has stuff he doesn't like, he has stuff he likes. We have stuff we don't like. We have stuff we like. Exactly the same. Aristus. If you had developed an attitude and a mindset of doing things in life that make your father, Heavenly Father, happy, and you're pleasing to him because you're doing things you know he likes, now you have confidence toward him you have complete and total confidence in God. Now flip over to verse 5, would you? And run down to verse 14 for a second. 
the great apostle says this, this is the confidence, same Greek word, parousia, our arts outspoken attitude of complete confidence. We truly believe, we truly understand, parousia, this is the confidence that we have in him, not in us. I don't have any confidence in me or my flesh. I dismiss myself. I'm looking to Jesus, the author and finisher of my faith. This is the confidence, parousia, we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will, thelema, the Greek word thelema is uh, a Greek noun. The verb of that word is thalo. So for example, the dying leper came to Jesus and he said to him, Lord, if you want to, you could make me clean. And Jesus said, quote, Thalo, I want to be clean. And you see, it is God's will to heal. He likes it because it makes him happy and it pleases him. If you get healed, you're pleasing God. If you repent of your sin, you're pleasing God. If you cast demons out of yourself, we call it self-deliverance, you're pleasing God. If you cast demons out of others or pray for others to be healed, you're pleasing God. You like to do the things that please God. Your life is not surrounded by everything that pleases you. That's a self-absorbed, selfish, self-centered person. That's somebody you don't need to be. Those are the characteristics of Satan. Yeah, that's his trifecta. And then it says here, Anything you can pray for that's God's will, it says we know that he hears us. Verse 15, if we know he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions we desire of him. Oh, well, now let's clean this up here. If you are a born again Christian and you're still what we call carnal Christian or you're living out of your flesh, boy, we're going to have some problems here, aren't we? Because you're not going to be doing the things that, that are pleasing to God. You're not going to be pleasing the Lord. But if you make those changes in your life and you start doing the things that make him happy, why are you doing that? Because you don't you don't want to get hit with a bolt of lightning and thrown in the fire of hell? No, you're doing that because you like him. It's a love thing. So you got to love him and care for him, like as he does you. If you start doing the things that are pleasing in his sight, anything you ask according to his will, his will, thelema, what he wants to do anything where do you how do you know what he wants to do well you just open the word of god and you look at the promises of god for all the promises of god in christ are yea and amen hunt it up it says anything anything you ask for that god has promised you can receive. Why? Because you're guarding his commandments and you're doing the things that are pleasing this sight. Greek word for do there is poieo and it means practice, to practice, not just doing it once, right? If you're married and you tell your wife, I love you on your wedding day, that's not good enough. You're going to have to say, I love you multiple times over the years that you're together. You can't just say it once and you have it work. <laughs> it's not going to work. Trust me on that one. No, practice means it's something that you're practicing. You put it into your lifestyle. And your lifestyle is this. You don't like to do things that displease your Heavenly Father, that bothers you, hurts in here. And all the little things you do at home, yelling, screaming, fighting, cursing, having a fit, pitching a fit, being selfish, being angry, being impatient, 
all these little things that are the opposite of the fruit of the Spirit. Remember, there's nine fruits of the Spirit. There they are, nine. There's nine of them, right? Anything opposite of that displeases God. And so you don't, the commandments of God are the nine fruits of the Spirit, and you guard them in your heart to rail. You're guarding it like a security guard, like a military officer. You're you're supposed to be guarding the country. Our military, I'm not sure what they're doing now, but years ago, the United States military used to guard the country. They used to take care of America. That was their number one priority. What it is now, I can't figure it out anymore. But guarding something means that you're on duty. You're ready to go. You're there. To rail. And anything you ask God, anything you ask him, that's in his will. Okay, now, if I go to God and I say, Lord, you know, make me as smart as Elon Musk. Give me as much money as Jeff Bezos. Okay, that's not God's will for my life. Okay, that's not going to happen. I'm not even going to pray that prayer because I realize how asinine it is. Okay, now, if I ask for wisdom from the Holy Ghost, who is the smartest person in the entire universe, that's a different story. And that's what God wants you to do. He wants you to get your wisdom from him so that you can develop the mind of the Lord Jesus Christ exhibited in full display, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. If you want to know what Jesus thinks, you want to know what his attitude is, you want to know what his desires are and his interests, you can find it. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And when you find the Lord Jesus' attitude and his interests and his desires, you have found Jehovah's because Jesus said, I always do those things that what? Please him. Please him. Jesus always pleased Father. Why? Out of love. He always did those things that his Father was pleased with. And that's what you are doing and I'm doing for the Lord Jesus. We're trying to do that. Now, is that going to happen 100%? No, it isn't. We're all going to, we're all going to fall short. Nobody's going to live a perfect life. That's just simply not going to happen. So let's, let's stay here with Brother Mike in the real world. I'm in the real world, not the spiritual hypothetical world. But our goal, our ultimate goal is Christ-like, which is to always please God. Now, will I ever be exactly Christ-like? No, that's not going to happen at Absurd concept, but your goal is to keep inching toward it in this life so that in the next life, he will make you like Jesus. For on the next life, you will be known as you are known. This is how God works, friend. This is the confidence, confidence that we have in Christ that if we ask anything according to his will, okay, I, if, dear Lord, please give me wings so I can fly to the moon. That's not going to happen. Okay, stop it. We're not flying to the moon. His will. What is God's will? Well, to find that out, I got to look in the promises of God. For all the promises of God in Christ are yes and amen, demonstrated in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We know he hears us. That's number one. That's the most important thing. He's got to hear you. Number two. Whatever we ask, we know we have the petitions that we desire from him. This is too fantastic for words, friend. Yeah. So all you got to do is make an adjustment on this end of your life. What things are you doing that don't please him? It's easy to figure out. You look at the nine fruits of the spirit, if something, something that you're doing is the opposite of that. Okay, you're there. You've already, you're already here. This isn't rocket science. We don't need somebody from NASA here to figure this out. This is as plain as the nose on your face. What things are not pleasing to God? Well, if you say to yourself, you know what? I've decided I want to have all my prayers answered. I want to get all the anointing and all the giftings that God wants to give me. I've decided I want the whole kit and caboodle. I want the the big burrito. I want the whole enchilada. I want everything God has for me. If you made that decision, then what you do is you start like a 
fisherman on a bank at the creek. He's whittling. He whittles stuff while he's waiting for a catch. He's got it there. He's whittling it. You're whittling off the things in your life that do not please your heavenly father. Remember, Jesus spent 30 years training for a ministry that lasted only three. And during that 30 years, he developed a keen, supernatural, brilliant, divine understanding of things that made Father happy. And the result of that was what? This is my son, the beloved, in whom I am well pleased. Here it is. Verse 20 again, chapter 3. For if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our hearts. Okay? You cannot please God by nitpicking yourself. Condemnation is of the devil. Conviction is of God. Being convicted is a blessing. Being condemned is a nightmare on Elm Street. Then it says, God is greater than our heart. And he knows all things. What does he know? He knows that since you're immersed in the blood that Jesus shed, you can come boldly to the throne of grace and find mercy. You can get help in time of need. That's what Brother Paul told the Hebrews. Then verse 21, here it is. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, if our hearts are not nitpicking us, criticizing us, running us down, trashing ourselves like the rejection demon told you to. If we're not doing that, he says we have confidence toward God. Notice he used the word beloved in that verse. Absolutely amazing. Uh, Agabetos is a Greek word that means highly loved, highly cared for, highly desired, beloved. You are beloved. Of God. That is the exact same Greek word God used to describe Jesus. When you are in Christ, the word beloved applies to you. The same word God used to describe Jesus, he uses to describe you. This is my son, the beloved, whom I am well pleased. This is my son and daughter in whom I am well pleased. See that word pleased? Boy, that's an important word in the Bible, isn't it? A lot of people don't don't put any emphasis on it. But wow, it's good. Because what's the what's the obvious implication? It's it's second grade. If you're trying to please someone, By nature, there's a built-in respect for that person. If you're trying to please them, it's built in that you respect them. It's built in that you care about them if you're trying to please them. If they like this and that and this and that, and you go, okay, I'll get you this and that and this and that. Well, that by there's a built-in concept that I care about what pleases you. And I'm going to make an effort to get it for you, to do it for you, to be that for you, whatever it is. It's all about respect. We always do those things that please him. So if you're nitpicking yourself, you just get got a divine revelation at this moment on the deep things of God with Brother Mike. Now you know why your prayers are not being answered. If you're effing yourself, you're blocking your prayers. Block. They're being blocked. Your prayers are not being answered because you're nitpicking yourself. That does not please God. That displeases him. Jesus said, I always do those things that please him. You're doing something displeasing to God. He doesn't like it. Stop it. If you're nitpicking, criticizing, running yourself down, and you're telling yourself effing Ewing, stop it. 
you're blocking your prayers. You don't have any confidence toward God. You're not going to receive anything you ask for that's, that is within God's will. Make the adjustment. So let, let's do it today. Yeah, just repent of it. Dear Lord Jesus, I apologize to you from the bottom of my heart for running myself down and attacking myself and criticizing myself and saying stupid things like well, that figures. Uh, my family was like that. Oh, gosh, I, I'm like my dad. He was an idiot. I'm a moron. Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus, I stop quenching the anointing and the giftings right at this very moment with my friends on podcast. I will never run myself down again. I will not run other people down because that displeases my Heavenly Father. I will not run myself down. That displeases my Heavenly Father. I will not do it in Jesus' name. I repent of it. I am going to change as of this moment. This is my moment, and I am going to stop it in the name of Jesus. I'm going to repent of it and never do it again. Amen. Some prayer kind of like that. Maybe you've got a better one than, than mine. You know, your prayers are as good as mine. Maybe yours is different, but that general concept, that's where you need to go. That's where you need to go. Well, I, well I'm a nobody. I'm this. No, you're not pleasing, Father. Boom, you just blocked your prayers. Boom, you can't see the answer anymore. It's over. And then your confidence goes out the window, right? Faith, believe, confidence. The trifecta of supernatural miracles. Well, Brother Mike, what does that actually look like? Well, let's go to an extreme end. Mary Wordworth Etter, Smith Wigglesworth, John Lake, Catherine Coleman. Come on, Amy Simple McPherson. Who are these people? A bunch of flawed humans with problems and screw-ups and failures. They had a truckload of them. So do you. You got a truckload of failures, don't you? Well, that they did too, but they had the trifecta. See, they pissed us faith. Pistool, activating their faith. Believe. Parousia, this is confidence toward God. What were the net result of that? Well, let's think about it. Massive help for others, which is the basic root of the gospel. Helping others. And that's what they did. They spent their whole life helping others. And they're in glory somewhere. I don't know what they're doing up there. But my guess is it's, a, it's something nice, something great. And by faith, I'm telling you, that's where you're going to go. Because you're going to stop displeasing your Heavenly Father. And you're going to start pleasing Him. And you're going to see a slew of answered prayers come into your living room. I mean an avalanche. I mean a tsunami. I mean a hurricane flooding through the door of your life and you're going to believe it. You're going to use the trifecta. You've already got faith. You do have some belief. You do step out occasionally on your faith. Not a lot, but you're going to repent of it and improve it. And then you're going to develop the triple, the trifecta, first place, second place, and third place. You're going to win all three spots in the race. You can't lose, baby. And you're going to suddenly see freaked out answers to prayer. And it's going to shock you initially. <gasps> wow. But then it's going to become normal. And you're just going to win all the time. You're going to win. You're going to reach a point where you can't lose. Why? Because you're guarding his commandments. You got the rifle. You got the M16. You got the whatever it is. You're guarding your his commandments. And you're doing poieo, practicing those things that he's pleased with, things that he likes and enjoys. Eh? You can tell what kind of a person somebody is, can't you? You don't, have to, you don't have to have a master's degree in counseling and psychology like I do to figure out what pleases somebody. Come on, stop it. You just look at them. You talk to them. They'll tell you. They'll show you what things they like, what things they don't like. If you hang around somebody for a while and you get to know them, You'll know exactly what those things are. There's no question about it. You can figure somebody out pretty quickly. Oh, I think they like this. I know they don't like that. They like these kinds of things. They don't like those kinds of things. Well, you, the same thing's true with your Heavenly Father. You can figure out very easily. 
principally by Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, by watching, watching what pleases Father. What is he like? What makes him happy? What, what makes him feel good? Father likes to feel good. He doesn't like feeling bad when he never feels bad. Oh, he feels bad all the time. When you are doing things that don't please him, he feels bad. That bothers him. Why is that? Because he is not nitpicking you. He is not pointing your faults out. He sees you as what you could be, not as who you are now. He sees you, he sees you as what you could be if you guarded his commandments in his heart and you did those things that are pleasing in his sight. You can become Sister Etter, Wigglesworth, A. A. Allen, McPherson. Come on now. Bill Seymour. Come on. You, all these guys that had massive anointings, who 100% of them had all kinds of flaws. If you read their lives, and I have, you'll see all kinds of failures and flaws in their life. No question about it. Why? Because they're, well, some, they had a quality that we use a lot. It's called being human. I said being human. That's right. You're being human. You've got flaws and failures. That is, that's, and God is still not nitpicking you. He's not condemning you. He doesn't see you as you are. He sees you as what you could be. And on today's podcast, you know what you're going to do? You're going to make, make a resolution in your heart and not your head. That's that that stuff disappears. If it gets into your heart, now that's a different story. You're going to make a resolution in your heart that you, like Jesus, are going to always do those things that please him. That's your goal. Of course, will you always will you ever get to that point? No, you won't. Okay. But that's not what God demands. He doesn't demand you be a perfect person. That's why he implemented the spiritual concept of grace. Grace covers your flaws, your failures, your your sin, your losses, your defeats, all of that is all covered by grace. All you got to do is confess it and then repent of it. And you're in. Nothing can stop you and there's nothing the devil can do to beat you. You win again. You imagine that? Yeah. Now, I'll be honest with you, I was praying during this move. It's been one of the worst experiences of my life, but I was praying and asking the Lord, send me one of his uh, low-budget, unknown angels to help move all this stuff into my house. And uh, I said, Lord, I need an angel. I don't care what his name is. could be Harry, Dick, or Bob. I am, couldn't care less. Just send me an angel, Lord, because I need somebody to start hauling this stuff out. I'm too old for this. I feel like I'm dying. You know, it's 112 out, and I'm loading pickups and taking crap over to my house. God never answered that prayer. I never had an angel show up. <laughs> I was looking for him, too. Couldn't find him. He never showed up. I have, I have an angelless house here. But that wasn't God's will for that. He wanted to help me and give me some additional, a little boost of strength to do it myself, and I did. And I worked and... God helped that way. He didn't help by sending an angel to haul the box for me. Okay, But that wasn't God's will. So I stopped praying that silly prayer when I saw nobody showed up. Well, you're going to do the same. You're going to, you're going to change your prayer life over to something that pleases God. Your prayers from this day forward are going to please God so you can get answers to every prayer all of them, John said. He said all of them. Okay, so take out a piece of paper, will you? This isn't a piece of paper. It's a napkin, but if you don't have any paper, paper is expensive. Now go ahead and use it. Go to one of these uh, Costco paper towels. There it is. And write it out. Write it all out. The things that you're doing in life that don't please God could be a little thing. Just make a list of it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's going to be a you know, it's a substantial list. It's okay. You don't nitpick yourself. God is not doing that, so you don't do it. All right? Stop doing that. Stop nitpicking yourself. If you make out this list, you're doing something pleasing to God. Would you like to please him today? Make the list out. Write it out. Things I need 
to change to please God. There's the title or some title similar to that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. And you're on your way, friend, to getting 100% of your prayers answered from God. This is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know he hears us, we know we have the petitions that we desire from him. All right. Please remember now. Please remember now I'll be in Carlsbad, California at the Senior Center for Healing and Deliverance Service this upcoming Saturday. Uh, starts at 10 in the morning. Please remember um, on the 18th of this month, I'll be at the Word of Life Assembly of God Church in Miami, Arizona for a Healing and Deliverance Service. Miami, Arizona, would you please call somebody who lives in that area? You know, Globe. Kearney, what is that? Is that on the way to Sholo up there somewhere? Could you call somebody and tell them about the service and let them know that we'll be in Miami, Arizona on the 18th, on the 18th of this month? Looking forward to it. Remember, Jesus said, I always do those things that please him. And although we will never 100% reach that goal, that is our goal, and we could substantially improve on it by reading these scriptures and following Brother Mike teaching the deep things of God, 1 John chapter 3 and 1 John chapter 5. I love you. See you next Sunday.